Good morning, everybody. Can I ask you, the folks, we've got lots of places, seats up here in the front, so please, uh, please come on up and sit down. We want you to join us for what I think is going to be an exceptionally interesting session this morning. We welcome Andrew Kohut to, uh, to CSIS. He's a very good friend, and he's been here many times with us. And we sought an opportunity to feature his most recent work. Of course, that's the Pew Global Attitudes Survey. Uh, first of all, you all know that Andrew is the head of the Pew Research Center uh, here in town. He comes to this from a very, very rich background, uh, probably one of the premier uh, polling intellects. And frankly, that, that misstates, I think, his impact in America. Uh, the, the fact he's, he's a highly regarded commentator across the board on issues, but that's because he comes to it with a with a disciplined science of trying to understand how people in the world are thinking about these matters. And in recent years, the Pew Research Center has been undertaking a systematic review uh, of attitudes around the world about America. Now, I've got, I've got some American friends that say, so what, who cares? You know, who cares what other people think about us? And, um, but I, I remind them that, you know, we didn't win the Cold War because we fielded bigger armies than the Soviet Union. We, we succeeded in the Cold War because we had ideas that the rest of the world wanted. And people decided they wanted to be a part of this larger campaign because of the values we stood for and the ideas we held up. And so it is important for us to know what people in the world are thinking and their attitudes. And I think you're going to find some very interesting results in this year's survey. It's uh, every year I read it with deep interest and some surprise, probably this year with greater interest and surprises. It popped out in very interesting ways. And so we're exceptionally fortunate to have Andrew Kohut with us. Would you all please welcome him for this very interesting presentation this morning? Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, that was a, quite a nice introduction. Uh, often uh, the words polling and intellect don't go together in, <laughs> in popular discussion, but I was happy to hear that, uh, that uh, description. In any event, uh, the Pew Global Attitudes Project is the largest ever series of multinational surveys focusing on worldwide issues. Uh, it began in Ju June 2001. We received a grant from the Pew Charitable Trust where most of the funding that for, for what we do both domestically and internationally comes from, and it was to study globalization and democratization. Uh, well, uh, by September 12, we were studying other things. Uh, we began, uh, our focus shifted to the image of the United States and how it was dealing with efforts, anti-terrorism efforts and efforts at, uh, issues related to combating terror, uh, terrorism and Islamic extremism. But over the years we've covered a range of uh, top international issues uh, as well as economic well-being, social values and a host of other topics uh, that lend, its, lend themselves well to making comparisons uh, across uh, uh, the many countries in which we do polling. Uh, we've conducted more than 240,000 interviews in 57 countries since 2001. Uh, I think we're probably most famous for chronicling the rise of anti-Americanism in over the course of the Bush years. And now we've been documenting how the global image of, uh, of the United States has changed as Barack Obama has become president. The poll I'm going to discuss today, our new poll, is based on 24,000 in-depth interviews uh, in 22 countries. It was done April 9th through May 7th. Uh, what I'd like to do is tell you about the findings for a bit, and then maybe we can look at some of the numbers and that give you a fuller sense of what I've been describing. Our headline this year was that Obama remains highly popular in most parts of the world, even though his job approval rating in the United States uh, is not so great in many respects. He's more popular overseas than he is here. And this benefits the image of the United States worldwide. 
opinions of the U.S. are far, remain far more positive in 2010 and as they were in 2009 compared to the way they were in the Bush years. Uh, the U.S. rating in Western Europe in particular is quite strong. 73% of the, Germ uh, the French have a positive view of us, one of the highest numbers we've ever recorded in France, and 63% of the Germans. These are very good numbers for the U.S., particularly relative to the numbers we had seen uh, over the past decade. Uh, opinions were also highly positive uh, uh, toward the U.S. and other nations around the world. We were uh, impressed to see or surprised to see uh, the extent to which opinions of the U.S. improved in Russia and China, very significant jumps between 2009 and 2010, and also in Japan. Uh, the disappointing news is that Muslim publics continue to hold a very unfavorable view, in fact, an overwhelmingly negative view in many places uh, of the United States. Uh, over the course of the year, uh, one of the secondary headlines was that Obama, uh, Muslims have become more critical of Barack Obama. There's a bit of a sense of disappointment with him uh, compared to, the, to views of Obama in 2000, not, uh, 2009. The views back then weren't very positive, but they were fairly positive, particularly relative to the way Muslim publics had regarded President Bush uh, in the many surveys we did in that period. In Egypt or in um, Turkey and Pakistan, just 17% of the people we polled had a favorable view of the United States. In Egypt, uh, we saw the U.S.'s favorability rating dropping from 27% 2009 uh, to just 17% this year, which get, makes it among the lowest, it, it makes it the lowest rating that we've obtained in Egypt since we've started doing polling there in 2006. Uh, closer to home, uh, one of the most disappointing and the most uh, unfavorable findings was uh, we found the radio, image of the United States tumbling in response in Mexico in response to the Arizona, new Arizona immigration law. Before the bill was signed, 62% of Mex Mexicans gave the U.S. a favorable rating. We were in the field and we decided, well, something very significant has happened, so we then did a follow-up survey, an identical follow-up survey, and we saw that 62% tumbling to 44%. We also saw Barack Obama's image uh, uh, affected by this in Mexico, a much more negative read on him after the bill, even though, obviously, Barack Obama was not a proponent of the bill. In fact, he was a critic of the law. But uh, nonetheless, he was tarred by that brush in Mexico. And I'll show you a bit of this when we get to the numbers. More generally, though, Obama's image remains very positive in most of the countries uh, in which we did polling outside of the Muslim world. 70, the median average uh, percentage who said they have confidence in him to do the right thing in world affairs was 71%. And 64% expressed uh, or gave, expressed approval of his policies in general. Uh, his ratings were greatest in Western Europe, and they continue to be very high. Only the Ke only the Kenyans gave uh, Obama a better rating than did Western Europeans. All right. Now, this is not to say that there hasn't been some tempering of what we describe as Obama mania that we saw last year. We found fewer in Asian and Latin American countries saying they, were have, they have confidence in Obama and strong endorsement of Obama of saying you have a lot of confidence in him declined in a number of countries in Western Europe. But it went from strong to uh, moderate in, in terms of uh, the polling. This was the case in Britain, in France, and Germany. But, as I said earlier, there were clear signs of disillusionment in the Muslim world. In, in Egypt, uh, Obama's um, confidence in him fell from 41 percent last year to 31 percent. In Turkey, from 33 to 23 percent. In Pakistan, we saw the numbers slip from 13, not very good, to 8 percent, even worse. Uh, I think one of, outside of the Muslim world, one of the most significant uh, findings of the survey was that generally positive views of, the, of Barack Obama and of the United States now coexist with concerns that people around the world have about America's approach to, to world affairs and key policies. This was not the case in uh, the Bush years. 
uh, in the Bush years, specific criticisms of the U.S. and its policies ran hand in hand with anti-American attitudes and anti-Bush sentiment. That isn't the case here. Attitudes where the policies aren't that different, but they don't they haven't translated into the negative views of the country. Uh, <clears throat> here are the doubts about uh, the American approach to world affairs that remain. The U.S. has continued to be seen as acting unilaterally and not taking into consideration uh, the interests of other countries in making its foreign policy. Uh, there's opposition in many countries to U.S.-led efforts to combat terrorism. That is not true in Western Europe. In Western Europe, uh, there is strong support for anti-terrorism efforts, and that's quite different than it was in the, in the Bush years, and again, I'll show you that in the slides. The war in Afghanistan gets an even more mixed review. Uh, around the world, and the poll finds uh, Obama with subpar approval ratings uh, on Afghanistan, Iraq, and Iran. So people say they generally approve of Barack Obama's policies, but when we get to these trouble spots, how's he, how's he dealing with Afghanistan, Iraq, and Iran, the numbers aren't so good, and I'll show you that too. Uh, it's, worth, it's worth noting that Obama's worst ratings were for dealing with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Now, this poll was conducted before the flotilla incident. Not sure what the, what the numbers would have been like if we had conducted it after the incident. Uh, Obama's best uh, ratings are for dealing with the world economic crisis. In fact, he gets much better ratings for dealing with the economy overseas than he does in the United States. Um, and overall, his approval ratings run uh, or his confidence ratings run 43 percentage points higher than President Bush's did back in 2008. Now, uh, enough of Obama and the image of the United States. We, uh, we covered other things. We covered economic attitudes, and we found, not too surprisingly, that uh, global publics are mostly glum about the way things are going in their country. They're dissatisfied. And despite signs of economic recovery in many parts of the world, people uh, everywhere complain that their economy is doing poorly and there isn't that much, there's certainly not across the board optimism. The notable exceptions are China, India, and Brazil, where there's just a, uh, just a much more positive outlook. Uh, disgruntled majorities uh, everywhere fault their government for their economic troubles. They also blame the banks and themselves. Relatively few uh, blame the United States, which I thought was interesting. Uh, an important uh, side note to all of this uh, doom and gloom about the economy is it took no toll on attitudes toward international trade and a free market approach. We still found, found the same relatively high percentages of people saying that they thought the free market approach, uh, even though it has ups and downs, is better is the best. Uh, is, the best, uh, is the best approach for their country and for themselves. In the wake of the European financial crisis, support for the EU and the Euro remains surprisingly strong, uh, but, but negative views of economic integration are, are clearly there. And there's a divide in the major countries in which we did polling uh, about financial assistance to troubled EU members. The Brits and the Germans are reluctant, the French less so. Uh, uh, with respect to terrorism, which is one of the things, as I said earlier in, in my presentation, that we've been tracking, uh, support for terrorism in the Muslim world remains well below the 2000 to, uh, 2006 levels when it really peaked. Uh, no country in which we uh, did we find uh, no country where uh, uh, did we find a, a majority of Muslims endorsing suicide bombing Osama bin Laden or Al Qaeda. It's not the case years ago. Uh, but still, it's not trivial to find as many as one in five people in major, uh, in many of the Arab countries in the Middle East saying that they th think that suicide bombing that targets civilians in defense of Islam can be justified. Those were still pretty substantial numbers. But <coughs> excuse me. Majorities in nearly every country, including the predominantly Muslim nations, oppose a nuclear armed Iran. There's widespread support for economic sanctions and reason and not less support for uh, considering military force, but not insignificant, not an insignificant amount of it. And I'll, again, I'll show you that too. And it, what was significant is there's, sig there's a, a good deal of support for using force in Jordan, Egypt, and Lebanon to prevent Iran from going nuclear. 
And that's an overview. I'd like to take you through the numbers and maybe give you a little bit of a better understanding of what I've been uh, talking to you about. Right click. Oops, no, I guess not. So here are the countries in which we did our interviewing, 24,000 interviews. Uh, we've been to back to many of these countries uh, many times over the course of the years. Uh, again, the interviewing was April 7th through May 8th. It took, takes a long time to do uh, cover this many countries. Some are relatively easy. They're done by telephone in uh, the West, in the United States, and Japan. But almost all of these are uh, personal face-to-face -face interviews. Uh, we have uh, 22 countries, but that means about 35 different languages in which the survey is administered. Here's the U.S. favorability rating. You can see how, uh, in Western Europe, you can see how the jump up occurs in 2009 and remains high in 2010. The numbers are still a little bit lower than what the State Department was getting back in uh, 2000. Uh, uh, in the Clinton years, but uh, these are pretty impressive relative to the lows that uh, we saw in the middle of the last decade in response, largely in response to the war in Iraq and discontent with President Bush's policies. Opinions in Russia went up rather significantly over the course of the past year. Not sure what that, whether that reflects the START treaty or or what, but numbers remain pretty high in Poland. Now the Polish interviewing was done immediately after that tragedy, uh, so who knows about the Polish interviewing, but uh, it's pretty, the, the Polish numbers are pretty consistent with what we've seen in the past. Uh, the numbers are much more negative in the Muslim world. If you see, uh, they've been consistently so. Uh, in Indonesia's uh, views of the United States improved upon Obama's uh, uh, on in, in, in response to Obama's election. That was true in Nigeria. Indo the Indonesian numbers have come down, but uh, the other numbers remain, the other Muslim numbers on the United States remain very low. The Lebanese number is a little bit misleading. It's a combination of the Shia and the Sunni. The Shia number is about zero, and, uh, and I'm serious, it's one or two percent. And the uh, Sunni number is up in the 60s somewhere. In Asia, the numbers are pretty positive. Uh, look at the Chinese number, jump from 47 to 58 percent, and that's true across, solid numbers are apparent across the, uh, across the board. Look at Japan, from 59 to 66 percent. In other countries, uh, largely positive, save Mexico. The Mexican number is a combination of the pre and post, so we'll ignore that, and uh, we remain highly popular in Africa. The United States was popular in Africa even in the Bush years, but certainly popular in these two countries uh, in the Obama years. Here's the uh, trend on uh, rating the United States uh, pre-knowing uh, pre about the Arizona law, post-knowing about the Arizona law, 62% favorable falls to 44%, pretty clear. The Obama numbers have come down a little bit in most places. Um, he fell from 93 to 90 in Germany, cause for real concern. Uh, but um, if you make the comparison with President Bush in Germany or France when the numbers were 14 and 13, it's pretty, it's pretty clear what's going on here. Uh, in Asia, we see the, and across the, across the world, we see the, the same general pattern of a little less positive than it was last, the, ra the ratings a little less positive than last year, but still pretty darn positive. Uh, the, in, in the, among the Muslim publics, the numbers have declined in the same percentage point difference, but proportionately, they're down a good deal from 33 to 23. And, in Turkey from 42 to 33 in Egypt and so on and so forth. Uh, Lebanon is relatively flat. Pakistan was so low it didn't really matter and we do see a bit of a decline in Indonesia. Um, this is a comparison of 
the point I was trying to make earlier that uh, there's a positive view of the United States remains despite some persistent negative views of how we conduct ourselves. Favorable views of the United States are 20 points higher than they were in 2007 from 40 to 60. Confidence in the president 43 points higher. But there's not much difference in the median, these are median percentages, in the, uh, in the median uh, percentage saying the U.S. Uh, considers the interests of other countries or my country in conducting its foreign policy. Uh, we see a, a similar evaluations with respect to Obama. The media, uh, we found 61, uh, 16 of our countries uh, approving, the majorities or pluralities approving of his overall international policies, 5% disapproving, and strong balances of opinion on climate change and world economic crisis, uh, divides on uh, Iran, Afghanistan, and Iraq. And on balance, more countries disapproving than approving of how he's been dealing with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Now, this is a, a rather significant trend, which is the increase in Western Europe uh, in uh, support for U.S.-led efforts to fight terrorism. The numbers were relatively low in uh, the Bush years, and they remain pretty positive in the two Obama surveys that we've conducted. Uh, not so in uh, the Muslim world. Uh, in the Muslim world, uh, U.S. efforts to uh, deal with terrorism are not well regarded, uh, uh, save Indonesia. And in Lebanon, again, it's that same mix. Our surveys have found, not this survey in particular, but other surveys have found that Ameri pu the publics in Muslim com countries look at uh, American anti-terrorism efforts as anti-Muslim efforts and not genuine, legitimate uh, anti-terrorism efforts. Even though the Muslim publics have not much regard for terrorism and are, con are very concerned about terrorism in their own countries. Uh, here are the EU numbers. Uh, the EU favorability numbers remain pretty positive. They were not favorable in Britain prior to this year. And they remain lower than in other countries. The German number is pretty strong. And there's a pretty broad endorsement in France, Germany, and Spain of keeping the euro. Uh, there's a real divide about uh, the uh, impact of economic integration as a positive or a negative. And the percent who say positive is a minority in each of these three major countries. It's a very big positive in Poland. And there, as I said earlier, there's a divide about financial assistance to troubled, uh, other troubled EU countries. Um, NATO favorability remains pretty positive, except in Germany, where it's tumbled from 73% fall of 2009 to 57%. In the survey, there's a pretty strong linkage between attitudes toward Afghanistan and a decline in support for NATO in uh, Germany. There's the trend on suicide bombing. As you can see, in 2004, 2005, these numbers were pretty high. They gradually came down country by country. They have come down mostly in response to countries experiencing suicide bombing. Uh, and then attitudes toward Osama bin Laden, attitudes toward this strategy or tactic uh, becomes much less favorable. Uh, on Iran, as I said earlier, uh, there's worldwide concern about a nuclear-armed Iran and worldwide support for economic sanctions. But a relatively strong endorsement for uh, uh, preventing Iran from uh, developing nuclear weapons uh, with some sort of military option compared to uh, placing your priority on avoiding a military conflict. That's even the case in Egypt, uh, Jordan, uh, uh, and uh, to a degree in Lebanon, uh, among people who are critics of um, or are concerned about uh, nuclear-armed Iran, which is most people in these countries. But in Western Europe, there's not overwhelming support for this, but a fair amount of it. And uh, that's a general overview of a survey that has a lot more in it than I could possibly tell you about. There, I hope you have copies of the report and can go on our 
website, pewresearch.org, and read all of the det details of what we did. John, I'll come to you. Um, thank you all again for coming. We're going to uh, open it up to questions, uh, and I know you'll have many um, following Andy's really thorough presentation here. Um, as moderator, um, and by the way, my name is Andrew Schwartz. I'm vice president here at CSIS, and I have the honor to preside over this today in Dr. Hamry's absence. Um, I want to use this opportunity to ask one question uh, of Andy. Uh, how much of the data and notion of America, um, our favorability and our disfavorability, was driven, did you find anything in there that was driven by the notion of American competence? I know this was, you did this before the oil spill, but one of the, the things that at, towards the end of the Bush administration um, that drove some of the opinion uh, on, on President Bush was, was the notion of competence. And I've heard that narrative come up time and time again um, with this president as well. Did you, did you find anything in, in, your, in your work on that? Well, uh, in a word, no. I, I think it's a legitimate concern, particularly in light of, uh, of the oil spill. But the issues that really have driven public opinion about uh, the United States have had less to do with American abilities uh, and more to do with American policies and intentions. And the great, greatest concern is almost the flip side of worries about competence, and that is power. Uh, what we saw in the Bush years was the trouble in the minds of many people with America's unchecked power become uh, vital and uh, come to the surface in people's minds. In the Obama years, it seems there's less concern about American power, and it's almost the opposite of what, you, what, what you're mentioning. But nonetheless, there is, this, is, this is a dramatic event. Mm, interesting. Well, look, we're going to open it up for questions. We, have, uh, we should have some microphones, so if you want to just raise your hand, we'll, we'll call on you individually. Questions? No questions? Uh, over here in the front, I'm sorry, I couldn't see you. Thanks. Uh, actually, uh, two questions. One, one, for most of these slides, what is the um, uh, margin of error? And also for uh, the question on Iran getting weapons, in were there any countries in which uh, a significant number of people favored Iran getting a, wep a nuclear weapon? The margin of error on most of these, for most of the, the chance error, uh, which is only one kind of error in surveys, but the one that you, you're referring to is about plus or minus three. Um, I don't think there were any countries where there wasn't concern about a nuclear armed uh, Iran. Richard, uh, did we find one country? Pakistan. Pakistan. In the back, over here, uh, gentleman in the blue shirt. Gentleman in the blue. Hi. Um, did you find anything in your poll about expectations about American power in the sense that, like, someone from China or India felt that American power is on the decline or anything like that? Well, that's a good question. We did find growing numbers of people thinking that China will overtake or has over, overtaken the United States with regard to economic power. We have a chart at the front of our report showing the percentage of countries growing in, over, the pa over the past three years. Uh, but in terms of overall power, including military power, I suspect that there isn't much of a trend on that. We, we did a good deal of work in the Bush years about how people felt about uh, America's power and not just economic power, and it was pretty substantial, and the concerns about the misuse of that power, its unrivaled nature, were, were substantial. They're less substantial now, sort of, uh, Obama has uh, alleviated concerns about that. But in terms of economic power, there's certainly a sense that uh, the Chinese either have or will overtake us on the part, uh, or on the part of many people, but not not most. We had another question right back here, and if you could identify yourself and, and let us okay. know. Uh, Taylor Dinnerman, 
Just a question about methodology. Um, in places like Pakistan and uh, China and other places which traditionally have been difficult to do accurate polling in, um, did you take any special precautions to make sure that you uh, got an accurate survey? Sure. What, what we do is we try to use the very best uh, local vendors uh, in each of these countries. Uh, we do uh, a very good job in making sure that uh, the language issues uh, are resolved. We do translations and then back translations. And we put our faith in the people who have done this polling for years in, uh, in these countries. Uh, the, uh, in China, the, the uh, pollster is a, uh, a very good one that works for a range of, uh, of interest in China, and, and we have a lot of faith in his ability to do uh, accurate sampling. In fact, it's relatively easy to sample in China because the records are good. And, and however, in both Pakistan and China, we are not getting complete national samples. We're not up in the uh, in the uh, territories in Pakistan, and we're not out in the West in China. We're only covering, I think, about 65 percent of the Chinese population and maybe 80 percent of the Pakistani population. And each year we've covered less of the Pakistani population because our survey research partner there doesn't feel confident that they can do a good job. Uh, right in the middle, the green shirt right here. And if you could identify yourself and the organization you're with. Hi, I'm Megan Curtis with International Development Systems. And you had mentioned that there remains overwhelming support for um, free and open trade. And I was curious if you could speak to trends across regions and um, how that changed through the Bush years as well. Trend, um, say that last part. Of the, what do you mean by that? Trends? Have you noticed more support in Africa versus Southeast Asia? What's been the trend in Muslim countries? I, I think that the, uh, first of all, it's not, our question doesn't talk about free trade. It talks about trade. You might get a different answer if you asked about free trade. Uh, but there's general support for globalization and there's general support for trade. And I think that what we fi find is pretty much uh, support across the board with relatively few variations. Richard, what are the most important variations that are worth pointing out? Thank you. Great. We have a question over here, sir. We're going to bring the microphones down. Thank you. Uh, Bruce Van Voorst, uh, Time Magazine. A question uh, on procedure. How does a typical interview take place? Uh, you begin with a questionnaire, and where do you go from there? A typical interview. Uh, a typical interview uh, depends on where where the interview is being done. In the West, it's a telephone interview. So there is a standard dial-up procedure that the German pollster uses, and a random sample of German telephone numbers, both landlines and cell phones. And um, they conduct the poll pretty much the way they're conducted here. Uh, overseas, uh, they're area samples. So a interviewer sent to uh, a neighborhood, let's say, or a village, uh, or a block within a city, and they have a, a uh, systematic approach for interviewing, for contacting uh, potential respondents. Generally, a quota of of men and women. Uh, they only interview people, only interview adults. Uh, the interviews are uh, conducted from a prescribed questionnaire that we're responsible from, and um, the our polling partner in these uh, countries takes responsibility that uh, the uh, distribution of the samples reflect the distribution of the population. They send it back to us and we double check it, or triple check it, because we check it once and Princeton Survey Research, which is the vendor, checks it even before that. So uh, it's pretty rigorously controlled, which isn't to say that, you know, there isn't uh, that uh, this is as cut and dried as doing a poll in the United States, uh, but it's a, it's a pretty pretty robust procedure. Thanks, by the way, to market research. Most of the people that do the polling uh, for th these kinds of purposes work uh, in market research. 
We're going to stay on this side with the uh, lady right here in the white, and then we're going to go directly to the gentleman behind her. Hazel Denton, Johns Hopkins. I wonder with all this data whether you have sufficient information to break it down by age structure. And if so, do you see any significant difference in attitudes between the young and the old, which of course would have rather significant implications in a country like, say, Pakistan? Yeah, speaking of Pakistan, is my recollection from the poll that we did last year, and we have a major uh, analysis of Pakistan yet to come out. We have many questions that we asked in Pakistan that have yet to be released, that there weren't differences by age. But we do have, we have found differences by age in, in general and attitudes toward the United States in a number of years where the younger people were more positive than the older people. Great. Sir? Thank you. Alan Kieswitter with CNO Resources. It's a common analy analytical assumption that in regard to Muslim public opinion that the driving issue uh, is the Arab-Israeli peace process and that doing something about that would change perceptions of America. Uh, is there any polling evidence to suggest that that's true? I think there's a lot of polling evidence that suggests that's true. Um, uh, we did a very significant Bit of survey. We've done significant polling about that over the years, and last year in particular, uh, with the Cairo speech, uh, we looked at attitudes toward uh, toward the United States and President Obama, both pre and post that speech, and found it didn't change things. It didn't move the needle all that much, but it moved it somewhat, and it changed people's idea about whether. Um, the United States would seriously consider the Palestinian point of view. Uh, we're going to go back and re-examine these questions probably next year. We didn't poll in Israel and Palestine this year. And my guess is that, um, that we might find something quite different than what we found. I'm sure we'll find something different than what we found last year. But more generally, uh, we you know, one of the underlying assumptions about uh, anti-Americanism in the Muslim world based upon the data that we've collected. A lot of it has to do with the, the United States as being seen as not fair in how it deals with this relationship, deals with this problem. One of the key findings you, you mentioned were that Obama's worst ratings were on the Israeli-Palestinian issue. Did, was, was there, is, is there more you can tell us about that finding that, that we should know? Well, it, it reflects the view that in Europe, uh, in particular, and other, other, certainly in the Muslim world, that the, the U.S. favors the Israelis. Um, there was a little less of that last year, post Cairo, and we had 27 countries, and uh, the only country where uh, the U.S. favorability rating actually declined was Israel uh, in response to uh, the Cairo speech. But for most countries, the prevailing view is that uh, the United States is on Israel's side and is not genuine in its efforts to deal with this problem. Has there, a lot of, a lot of people think there hasn't been quite enough follow-up um, on the Cairo speech. Has, has that played out in any of your research? I, I can't a answer a question as specific as that, but clearly the decline across the board in the Muslim world has got to be related to something like that. Interesting. Uh, in the middle, right here. Real in the TFA uh, research intern here at CSIS. I'm having a little trouble hearing you speak more, more into, the, into the mic. Uh, I'm a research intern here at CSIS, Reeland. Uh, just had a general question. There were similar questions already on the demographics of the respondents uh, who took the survey. And more specifically, if you have a percentage of uh, how many of the respondents were women in the Muslim countries. Thanks. I believe about 50 percent, is that right, Richard? Yeah, 50 percent of the women in, in uh, 50 percent of the respondents in the Muslim countries were women. And we try to do the, inter the interviews are matched by, by sex, and we try to have the, inter the female interview and the male interview separate so that uh, there's privacy in, uh, in their responses. Great. We have a question in the front. <coughs> Hasan Azar, Türkiye Daily. Was there any question uh, about nuclear weapons in the Middle East? What was the reason not to be asked uh, about Israel's nuclear weapons? Do you consider to ask this issue in future surveys? Thanks. I'm sorry, I didn't quite 
follow that question. You want to restate it? Did you ask any question about nuclear weapons in the Middle East, especially Israeli nuclear weapons? Ask questions about nuclear weapons, especially what? Israel's nuclear weapons. Israel, no, we have not asked questions about. Pardon me? Yes, yes, I think that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable uh, consideration. Uh, Brett Baptist, right here in the middle. Hi, Brett Baptist with CSIS. I'm wondering, in your introduction, you mentioned that people around the world blame either governments or banks for the economic woes that they're currently in. And I'm wondering if you can expand on that specifically. Uh, were we talking central banks? Were you talking their own country's banks, or were you talking Wall Street? I can't expand on it because it's one category in, in, a, in a question which says, who do you fault most? Uh, certainly in the United States, uh, if we use the United States as a model, I do know a lot about American public opinion, uh, the bigger the institution, uh, the greater sense that <laughs> they're culpable, Wall Street writ large rather than, than uh, the local bank. Uh, probably bears more of the responsibility here, and my guess is that's the case there. I was surprised by how few people selected the United States or said they blamed the United States. Interesting. Uh, in the back, right over here, right behind you. Uh, Teddy Cherry from Congressman Ed Mackey's office. Uh, since you look at all places around the world, what do you think uh, would be the chances that the Latin American country will create a union similar to the Euro Union, and what possibility do you think that the United States will support such a venture, knowing that in the past, because the Middle East had interest in helping them, they didn't support such an approach from Latin American country? Uh, that's a good question, but I, I certainly don't feel qualified to answer that question. Uh, uh, that's beyond my expertise. Do you have any more in the back over here? I don't see any more. Uh, right, right in the middle, uh, back middle. Here. Uh, Daniel Magalotti, and I'm an intern with the Middle East program. I know in a lot of Gallup worldwide polling, they have a really high rate of, the, of abstention, especially in developing countries like India, where they have like 70, 80 percent answered don't know or refused. I was wondering how you push undecideds in your methodology and why you have such a low rate of abstention. You know, I'm not aware of uh, the rates of um, no opinion and the Gallup surveys being that high, and the rates of um, no opinions in India seem comparable to what we see in country, other South Asian countries. I mean, it's no different than Pakistan. In fact, the, the greater problems we've had were, were not, have not been in India. They've been in Pakistan, uh, where people have became, at various points in time, very, very leery about answering our questions. Right in the front. Thanks. Edmund Rees Jones, British Embassy. Do you have anything that speaks to um, uh, aspirations to live in the United States or to change their own countries to the US model? There's been a lot of talk about uh, uh, other state capitalist models and so on and so forth uh, on the rise. Do you have anything on that? Yeah, we have uh, quite a bit on both of those subjects, not in this particular survey, but over time. What we saw over the past decade is fewer people uh, saying that they would advise young people who wanted to leave their own countries to come to the United States. Uh, many mentions of Australia and New Zealand and all kinds of Canada and all kinds of places, but with the U.S. image being fairly low um, you know, over that era, that those percentages were um, uh, a good deal lower than, uh, than, than we expected. We did find, however, when we talked to people in the Middle East who had uh, friends and relatives living in the United States, uh, that they had a very high regard uh, for the experience of these, of these emigres. Now, the second part of your question was about aspirations. Say that one more time. I see. Um, and to what extent you have a thing, and you've talked a little bit about trade, but um, is there anything in there about uh, democratic institutions or the rule of law or any of these other associated issues? Well, the most consistent admirers of the United States uh, are found in Africa. 
uh, when we ask about the American approach to politics, democracy, uh, the way we do business, uh, it's in Africa more than anywhere else. In Europe, uh, views about the American approach have been less positive, and despite our improved ratings, I'm sure they continue to be less positive. But you know, there are, region by region, it, it varies. One of the mo most surprising findings consistently in our surveys have been that in the Middle East, where we're poorly regarded, there's such a high positive response to the American way of doing business. So it's very varied, very varied. There's quite a bit of work, uh, quite a bit of material in our, in our work uh, over the years on these questions. Question in the far back. Um, Nick Rosalini, Roosevelt Campus Network. Um, in regards to the extremely low numbers, uh, approval numbers in Pakistan, could you comment on the interplay between presumably negative views on American operations against terrorism in Afghanistan, and Pakistan, and elsewhere, um, and also United States uh, policy towards India, especially in light of the nuclear deal signed in 2005? Yeah, I can comment on uh, what we found last year, which I suspect is not going to be too different than what we found this year. Uh, the Ameri the in, in Pakistan, there's a good, uh, there's much more concern, uh, uh, much more concern about terrorism and Al Qaeda and the Taliban in recent years than there was three or four years ago, and uh, they share with the United States, the, the Pakistani public shares with the United States great concerns about Islamic extremism and terrorism. Uh, but that does, that has not led to an improved opinion of the United States because the United States has seen as uh, going off uh, uh, and, uh, and conducting its own uh, campaign uh, to deal with terrorism uh, uh, without, without reference to uh, the government of Pakistan and uh, challenging uh, the, uh, the, uh, the um, sense that the United States is Pakistan's partner in this uh, in this can in, in this anti-terrorism effort. So while there's greater uh, there is a much there's, there's much greater shared uh, concerns about uh, terrorism in Pakistan, it hasn't improved the image of the United States. Okay, well, we're going to go directly back here, and then we're going to come back on this side. Uh, Thomas Gulbenas, Embassy of Lithuania. Did uh, did your survey also explore the attitude towards uh, issues like democracy and human rights in those countries? We we did not do that in this survey, but we've done it in many other surveys over the years. But not much. In, in, well, in, I guess in the Pakistan survey, which we've yet to release, we we do look at the is issues of democracy and human rights, but. Not, this was not a general topic of, of, of this particular survey, but it has been uh, over the course of the years. Okay, we're going to go right over here. Bring the microphone down front. Marissa Kramer of the Institute for Communitarian Policy Studies. Um, I wanted to ask about the distinction, if you, if you tested that in your surveys, between the views of Obama in terms of will he do the right thing and the confidence people place in him versus views of America and Americans in general and the American political system in general? Well, what we see is a tremendous correlation between the positive views that people have of Obama and the trend in the way they, re they regard the United States. Um, the issue has been, I think the issue continues to be uh, how how strong is this linkage uh, and how, 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 to what extent will it persist over time if the public become, publics around the world become disaffected with Obama's approach on Afghanistan or Iran or Israel? Uh, will this in, uh, affect uh, the improved image of the United States? To my view, in my, in my view, I'll, I'll come back to a, a theme, and that is the uh, issue that really affected uh, the image of the U.S. in the Bush years was the sense that America, America's power was unchecked, unbridled, and went off and did its own thing, contrary to world public opinion on Iraq and on other issues from, uh, from Guantanamo to Abu Ghraib and so on and so forth. And uh, unless we get to a situation where people around the world begin to think that way about the United States, probably the image of the United States 
of the U.S. Will, 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 will remain improved, even if there's more disappointment with Obama over time. We've got time for about two more. We're going to go on the way back over here. Uh, my name is Henderson Tresker. I'm from the Roosevelt Institute. Um, since Obama took office, he's uh, drastically increased the amount of predator drone strikes in the border regions between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Although um, we've seen the numbers very low already in Pakistan, could you give us a sense about how that has affected public opinion in Pakistan? Uh, I can't, but I will. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have a report that will be out in a, a few weeks that looks at that very question. We'll look forward to hearing that. Uh, we're going to, last question right here in the front. Uh, thank you. Carl Dahlman, Georgetown University. One issue that I found very interesting, given that there's so much concern about economic future, uh, the question on trade, the people were very supportive of trade. I wondered if in this survey or in others, you explore more the concern about increasing protectionism in the world, giving more competition and global restructuring that's going on. Well, I think that there, um, you know, there are two, there, is as, as irrational as it may sound, there are, t there are often two thoughts that run time, uh, hand in hand. We want more trade, but we want to be protected at the same time. And I think many of our surveys have shown uh, that, that sentiment. That sentiment exists here. Great. With that, I'd like to thank Andy Kohut for this terrific pr presentation and for uh, all the great questions we're asked today. Uh, let's give Andy a round of applause. Thank you. We'll have this presentation up at CSIS.org later, and uh, please visit CSIS.org. Thanks. That's great. Thank you.